So what I want to do in this last video is that I want to work a bit more on the bridge over here as well as uh, making the, um, the actual lenses the, um, that will be placed in this within this uh, frame. So I'll start off by uh, working on the, um, the bridge and making some uh, making a good transition for placing it on on the nose. At the end of the video, I'll also be doing a bit of simple rendering just to show how this object looks like in an artificial environment with a material. I'll just rotate back to the back of the, uh, the glasses, the frame, and I'll go back into sculpt mode and I can just double click the, um, the icon, the form icon in the activity timeline and I'm back into sculpt mode as you can see. So I'll just do a quick I'll just move these lines a bit. I'll hold down the shift button. Um, I want I want to do it because as you can see from the top you can see that it's very curved and I want to make an uneven wall thickness here which will make it easier for me when when we're actually going to make the the nose part so I'll just turn off incremental move for now I'll reorient myself a bit and I'll just start by selecting the face selection filter and I want to extrude these planes I might consider to do this one as well Okay, now as you can remember from the first video, by holding down the Alt button you can actually extrude new faces. So I'll do that again, I'll just hold down the Alt button and I'll just start dragging out these faces. And I want to go, I think, I think I'll do 4 millimeters. In mind that I have to write minus four in order to get it in this direction. I'll press OK and uh, we can now see that the uh, the crease has actually followed that shape and I don't actually want that so I'll just double click that crease. I'll go in and I'll uncrease that. That's okay, and I want to actually put on a crease there where it used to be. Okay. So we've got our new extruded shape, but it's very box like, so. I'll go into box mode because I actually find it easier to do detailed manipulation in box mode. And I'll start off by working on this transition and I'll just put that in a bit. And it's very important now to make sure to not interfere too much with shape so it's important to look at it in different orientations. I'll select these lines and I'll just start dragging them down and in fact what I'll do is that I'll double click these lines. Um, I can actually I'll just push them in a bit to the left, but on the other side here, 
I'll just select these lines as well. I want to push them in just a bit. Uh, there is something going on here. We could consider to actually drag this face or drag that line out of it. And we can now go back into smooth display and we can have another look. And we can actually see that this is starting to take shape. Now what I'll do is I'll try to push these back so that the transition is smoother at the top. And I also want to do the same at the end. So I'll go back into box mode and I think what I'll do is I'll just remove that vertice or that edge by simply pressing delete. And I could do the same over here as well. I can also delete by right clicking and just pressing delete. And that should actually give me a smoother transition. I can increase that transition, the smooth, smoothing out the transition by selecting these lines and starting to push them back into the geometry. And you can see that the smoother the shape, the smoother the actual if it looks smoother in box mode, it will definitely look smoother in smooth mode. So let's look at it again. I'll have a look at it in smooth mode. And we can see that it's gradually taking more shape still a bit boxy around here and I might want to just nudge that line in a bit so that it gives us a more comfortable rounded edge for the nose. I'll have a look at it from the side and as you can see if we enable the side view it's starting to take shape. I might want to push everything down a bit. Just turn it off and I'll go back into from looking at it from the back and I'll put on box display and I'll just push that down a bit. And I'll take these two vertices and I'll drag them a bit in in order to make a smoother transition. So I'm going backwards and forwards a lot and there are some some short keys. Um, however, Autodesk haven't really or Autodesk Fusion 360 isn't doing very well at the moment with shortcuts. I would prefer to have some more shortcuts. But you can use Alt 1, 2, 3 and you can view it in different modes. So that's that's very useful. So they've they've sorted some things out when it comes to shortcuts. Right, that's uh, looking pretty good. I could have done some some more details at the back here. I could drag out the um, the shape a bit, but I think um, I think uh, I'll uh, I'll leave it at that for now. So that's uh, that's the nose nose job done. Okay, so the last thing we'll do now is that we we want to make the actual the lenses and um, 
it's um, it's seemingly complicated. Uh, I'll be doing I'll be going through different modes within the program, but it's actually quite simple. So we'll start off by going out of the 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 form the sculpt mode, and uh, I'll just go in and I'll view the original sphere that we were working on and you can see that this is actually the, the sphere, the original sphere and uh, I'll just start by right clicking the sphere and I'll, I'll do some simple I want to move it a bit because I want the I want the sphere to to fit in evenly at the front I'll just move that a nudge and I'll also just push it a bit down. As you can see, it now has a more even distribution at the front. Right, so I've got I've gone into the patch mode because uh, what I want to do is I want to create now, I want to create an offset of this inner ribbon and uh, I'll do that by just selecting it, making sure that I'm in patch mode and I'll do an offset of that with a zero distance. The second thing I'll do is actually make an offset of the sphere. The reason for that is that the original sphere is displayed as a um, as a solid and I want it to be an orange patch so I'll go into offset I'll select the sphere make sure that I've got a zero distance and I'll press OK and I'll use this ribbon to make a split line so I'll split the body. The body I want to split is, so I'll make sure that I've turned off the original sphere. The body to split is now this new offsetted sphere and the splitting tool will be the ribbon. I can also hide that and I'll just press OK. So if we now hide these different faces, we can now s see that we're left with this shape, which is what's left of the sphere. So that's good. The next thing I'll do is I'll actually just move, I'll go back in the timeline just to move the sphere a bit because as you can see it's it's not really in the center of the ribbon and I'll just do a quick evaluation of it just to see how we're doing and I can see that it's about 2.7 millimeters so this whole ribbon is four millimeters wide. I want to go back another seven, 0 0.7 millimeters in, in order for it to be in the center of the ribbon. So we'll just go in to move body. I'll right click, I'll press edit, and I'll actually just start by dragging it and I'll just write minus 0 0.7 and I'll just press OK and everything should be go back to where, where it is because it's a parametric modeling so we'll now we'll offset the This, um, this glass to make it a solid and um, I'll actually I'll go back into model I'll 
Right, sorry, so before I do the thicken, I actually want to extend the lens a bit. And the reason for that is that if we view the lens, we see that it's perfectly tangent to the ribbon. Now I don't want that, I want to have a groove in the actual frame so that I can click on my lens and I want to extend the lens so that I can make a, a use that body to make a cut into the frame so we'll just hide the frame we'll go in and we can extend the line with 0 0.5 millimeters I think that should be sufficient I might want to do a whole whole millimeter I think maybe that's a good idea and I'll press OK so the next thing I want to do is I want to make the thickness so we'll go into model I'll apply thickness to that shape and I want to do it symmetrically and I think 0 0.5 should be a good thickness okay so if we now view the uh, the frame we can see that we have applied some thickness to our lens now there is no groove on the frame so to make a nice groove we need a nice chamfered edge on the actual frame on the lens sorry so I'll go in and actually make a chamfer on this edge which should be 0 0.75 and I'll do the same on the other edge so I'll reselect I'll try to select both of them that's not possible so I'll do one chamfer at a time so that's okay I'll make a new chamfer on the other side which should also be 0 0.75 and that leaves us with a perfectly sharp edge so if we ghost the frame we now see that it's kind of it's going to dig in a little groove so we'll view this back on I'll now make a, a mirror of the lens so I'll just go in in mirror tool select the object I'll select the mirror plane and I'll make sure that I'm actually mirroring the whole body and not just the face that should be good I'll press OK I'll hide the frame just to make sure that I've got two solid bodies and what I'll do now is actually use the combine feature to make the groove so target body is the frame tool bodies would then be our lenses and what we want to do is that we want to make a cut so using the tool to make a cut and at the end we would like to keep the tools because they will serve as the lenses so I'll hide the mirror and you can now see that there is a little groove in the shape
And that's just what I need to click on my snap in my my uh, lenses. Okay, so that is pretty much it. We'll view the um, the lenses. I'll just apply some materials here, so we can go in and add some some glass. Let's see if we can find something. I'll just see with that. It looks fine. It's just a render. And uh, I'd like some white or light, maybe a glossy paint on the actual glasses. And it would be nice with white. Okay, so let's put that into, let's save it and uh, let's put it into the render. That looks uh, pretty good. Let's give it a custom background color. I'll go for a, a dark gray. And you can, of course, add some fill some uh, fillets to it if you want to. Okay, so that concludes this video.